Good morning, brethren. Church of the Living God. Hi. Well, today, I'm going to be answering a very good question by a beloved brother who is known to ask very, very good questions. Got quite a few other videos in the works, Lord willing. A, a brother um, gave a, a very sh small morsel um, that he, both he and I are, are looking forward to what the Lord um, may do with that morsel. And that is working, dear brother, by the way, so you know. Also, too, got lots, <laughs> praise the Lord, lots of um, um, research to do. Um, a, a beloved sister has sent me, oh, praise the Lord. I like being kept busy. I really do. I really do. We, excuse me, we. But I'm going to be answering a question in this video today, Lord willing, okay? Now, um, of course, I'm not going to name the brother who asked this question. You know who you are. But I want to make this mention before we get into this, brother. You asked me two questions. I'm going to only address one because the other question that you asked about 1 Timothy 6, okay? And you know who you are. It, it defined your question is answered within the verse that you um, noted, okay? The, the answer is right there. As far as your question for First uh, Timothy chapter six, okay, it's 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 right there. That's your answer um, to what you had asked about First Timothy chapter six, okay. So, not gonna not gonna answer that one because it's right there for you, okay. But this one, this one, as concerning Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verses sixteen on to verse seventeen. The question that was asked is, how can you be righteous over much? I like that. I like that. And brother, I love you. Like I said, the other question that you asked, the, it is, it's defined within that context. Okay? Bless your heart and soul. But this one we're going to dive into. Okay? So... Get your authorized version of the scripture, and yes, in this video, once again, going to be using two sets of scriptures, okay? We are going to have some, a little expository in this, okay? A little. <laughs> a little, okay? We are primarily going to be focusing on three verses, verses 15, 16, and 17 within Ecclesiastes chapter 7. But, let us get a little bit more of the context, which is found between verses 11 and verse 22. Okay? Alrighty. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And again, I am going to speak unto you as though you are following along in the scripture. Okay? The scripture. The authorized version. Not a Bible. Okay? This. This. This is the scripture, okay? Okay? So, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Let's begin at verse 11, and we are going to read on to verse 22, but we are going to make some stops along the way, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 7, beginning at verse 11. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. What is wisdom? Job 28, 28. To fear the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So wisdom is what? Fear of the Lord. For wisdom is a defense. The fear of the Lord is a defense, isn't it? And wisdom is good with an inheritance. Beg your pardon. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Verse 11. And by it there is profit to them that see the sun. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. The fear of the Lord is what brings you on to salvation. Okay, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord leads to what? Brokenness. Okay, broken of your self-righteousness. Contrition. Sorrow. Not just for the fact that you are a sinner, but that 
what you did to cause the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to be crucified. Okay? It's not just, oh, I'm a sinner. Yes, you are. We are. I, I am a sinner who is chief. The sorrow is that you are guilty, that it's your fault that he went to the cross. Okay? Okay? So, wisdom is good with an inheritance. You fear the Lord, you come to him broken and contrite, trust on him, believe on him for what he did to you, uh, what he did for you, and in that fear, brokenness and contrition, you're going to call out to the Lord. And may he save you. Okay? May he save you. And when you are saved, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? Yes, we're beating a dead horse, but you're going to get... Bloop, okay? Once you are saved, you are sealed. You have inheritance. Okay? You do. Your inheritance. What is that? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? You have inheritance within the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Okay? And there is pro and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. Verse 12. For wisdom, fear of the Lord, is a defense, and money is a defense. Money. Spiritual and things that are of the world. Okay? Money, right? Look at all these people who have all the money they can have. Right? People love people who love money, right? Yeah, it's the love of money, which is the root of all evil. Okay? Keep that in mind. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom, the fear of the Lord, giveth life to them that have it. A lot of people have knowledge, but a whole lot of people don't have wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Okay? And note how it says there, wisdom is a defense, the fear of the Lord, and money is a defense. Which one puts you stock into? Money, the things of the world? Or wisdom, the fear of the Lord? Which one do you put stock into? Which one do you hold to? Okay? Verse 13. Consider, think, the work of God. For who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? In the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider. Consider. Is there evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Does not the Lord kill, wound, make alive, heal? Is he not God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father? Hmm? Is he not in control? What, shall we receive only good from the Lord and not evil? Job said that, go find it. Hmm? In, the day of, of, in the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider... God also hath set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. Now, get a load of that verse. Get a load of that verse because that's our buildup. Okay? To the end that man should find nothing after him. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 8. Oh, on to verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 11. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, 
but in God which raiseth the dead. Oh. <laughs> Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver. Remember, we are not appointed unto wrath. The time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? We are not appointed unto wrath, but to obtain salvation, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, do not neglect to pray for one another. Have you seen his seed begging bread? You know, you don't, you're not, you don't want to have riches or poverty, but have food that is convenient for you, right? Right? And if he give you more or the lesser, praise the Lord for it. Having food and raiment, let us there be there with content. Right? Okay? But ye, verse 11, ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, spirit, soul, and body, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Do not neglect to pray for one another, dear brethren. Dear brethren. Okay? Look at verse 14 again in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. In the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider. God also has set the one over against the other, to the end that man should find nothing after him. Okay? Now, verse 15. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. This is King Solomon, okay? This is King Solomon who's talking. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness. And there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. And later on, in, uh, here within the book of Ecclesiastes, um, he talks about, Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, but yet judgment doesn't come. Yet it is good with those who fear the Lord, those who fear before Him. But also, go to Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Verses 1 and 2. Okay, verse 15. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Isaiah 57, verses 1 and 2. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. And there are those uh, out there who actually do believe that the church of the living God is going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 2. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Now go to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. See, what's going on right now, this is their hour and the power of darkness. We, the church of the living God, as you know, for it gets horrifically bad, 
we are going to be redeemed. And and yet it, it, it drives us crazy that the righteous, those of the church of the living God, who are clothed with his righteousness, seem to be the ones suffering, but yet the evil is waxing worse, greater and greater. We knew this was going to happen. Amen. Amen. Don't we? We knew this. But our time is ending. And theirs. Oh, it's just beginning. But now, verse 16. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Make thyself over rise. How can one be righteous over much? Well, go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. See, as the church of the living God, we want to be sinless. Don't we? I, I believe in no sin. But guess what? Guess what? You cannot be sinless here on earth while your spirit and soul are within your flesh. You can't do it. Okay? There's none righteous, no, not one. And there is not any mortal man on earth that is sinless. There was one who just happened to be God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. See, see, we as the church of the living God, we want not to sin. And we strive not to sin, don't we? But then you realize, no matter how you try, you're going to sin. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Lest thou also be tempted. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 16. Okay? About who is spiritual. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, philosophy, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You're saved, born again of the church of the living God. You have the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that spirit living within you. Hence, spiritual. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? But the natural man, unregenerate, not saved... Receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual, saved, born again, converted, has the Spirit of God within him, her, okay? But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Oh! <gasps> judgeth all things? No. Yeah. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, 
that he may instruct him. But we, those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we have the mind of Christ. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And this, uh, in, the, in Galatians that we're looking at, we're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 3 and expository kind of stuff on that as well is a collaborated effort with a brother of mine, okay? But, 1 Corinthians now chapter 10, verses 12 on to verse 13. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but as is su but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Verse 16 in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise, why shouldest thou destroy thyself? And go back to Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Okay? And so fulfill the law of Christ. Go to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 17. Here is, fulfill ye the law of Christ. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Shimon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Shimon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, Dost thou wash my feet? Self-righteousness here in Peter coming up. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. See, he thought he was being humble. But see, kind of a self-exhortation. That he was so bad that he was so bad that the Lord wasn't going to wash him. You think like that. And to a point that's healthy, that you are so bad. But there again, remember, there ain't nobody who is that bad that the Lord cannot save. You just have to be broken of your self-righteousness. Have contrition. You know, fear the Lord. Peter saith unto him, verse 8, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Shimon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. A little bravada on the part of Peter. There. Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. 
For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. And in Galatians chapter two, uh, chapter 6, verse 2, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ, serving one another. Which I am doing here, serving others, not just myself, see. That is, and so fulfill the law of Christ, charity, self-sacrifice, serving others as he served you. Now verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Luke 17. Luke 17. Verses 7. On to verse 10. Luke 17. Verses 7 on to verse 10. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field go, go and sit down to meat and will not rather say unto him make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye, he is plural, shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. And then of course, of course, go to... Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 3. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 3. I beseech you, brethren, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, excuse me, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For the just shall live by faith. Now, now look at Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 17, uh, 7, verse 16 again. Be not righteous over much. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Okay? Neither make thyself over wise. We are to be terrified of the Lord. Okay? But the fear of the Lord... Is clean right you can get and I've noticed this I noticed this primarily in those who are babes and, and praise the Lord for it you can have such terror of the Lord that you become unfruitful you could be terrified to do anything right Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Paul said, Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Think about it. You of the church of the living God, the Lord orchestrates uh, something where he is going to use you. And he uses you to correct someone. Okay? To correct them. To show them the truth. To guide them onto himself through you. Okay? Number one, you can be tempted to be proud, thinking that you've done something like you're this great one. I feel like the Apostle Paul for all the people I have led to the Lord. Or 
you could be tempted to sin. You know, whatever that may be, you know, by being guided into a situation, because of that situation, might tempt you to sin. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Tempted to sin, tempted to be proud. Considering thyself. That's why you keep your eye upon Jesus. And don't get yourself high-minded. Okay? Be not righteous over much. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 12. Ooh. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 on to verse 10. Unless I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And if anyone had, could, had grounds to be exalted above measure, but the Apostle Paul, who wrote a majority of the New Testament, who here in uh, First Corinth, uh, Second Corinthians, chapter twelve, he got brought up where God was, and saw things that he couldn't speak about, and yet you have these care Catholic twits talking about how they went to heaven, <laughs> and the Apostle Paul, who was there where God was, couldn't even speak about it. Was too afraid. Where where was that? Where was that? Um, Verse 4 in 2 uh, second, uh, second Corinthians chapter 12, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So he was brought up where God was. And Paul the Apostle, which is not lawful for a man to utter. If anyone's talking to you about how they've been there to heaven, that they're lying. They are lying. Okay, if the Apostle Paul was up where God was and he wouldn't say anything about it, okay, <laughs> all right, just so you know. But Paul the Apostle, I truly believe, and this is good proof of it, Paul's greatest sin that he struggled with was, hello, pride. Pride. Exalting himself. Be not righteous over much. Verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. In, in 2 Corinthians 12, sorry. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. Be not righteous over much. Don't get a, don't get full of yourself. Neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Again, you can that we are to fear the Lord. We are to greatly fear the Lord. But if your fear of the Lord which we are, hello, we are to have the fear of the Lord. But if that fear is preventing you from doing anything as he will guide you, are you so afraid that you will do nothing? Are you so afraid that it's like, oh, I, I'm so scared to sin. I'm so scared to offend the Lord. And the Lord is like, uh, hello, I, I gave you that opportunity Okay, <laughs> and you didn't take it, but Lord, I'm I'm so afraid. You gotta get out of the boat. 
you have to get out of the boat. Like Peter did. Who, when he saw the wind boisterous, he started to sink. He didn't go plummet. He started to sink. Because he took his eyes off of Jesus. See? See, you could be so scared. And amen! Amen! The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And what of, is the fear of the Lord produce? To depart from evil, which is understanding. The Lord doesn't want you so terrified of himself that you become unfruitful. See? Okay? We are to abide in him. Okay? We are to fear the Lord. Absolutely. But if your fear of him is preventing you from him using you because you're so afraid to do anything, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. See? And I have known, brethren, who have been so terrified. And amen. Amen. We are to fear the Lord. But if you're, if you are producing within you an unhealthy fear of the Lord that keeps you bogged down. See, where the Spirit of the Lord there is liberty. And the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? The Lord will set you free. You fear Him so you keep your nose clean and depart from evil, see? But if you have such a fear that keeps you way down, there's a problem there. There's a problem there, see? Be not righteous over much. Self-righteous. Alright. Paul, all the people I've led to the Lord. Get off your high horse. There are a few of you who know who I'm referring to when I say that statement. And don't be so horrified to be used of the Lord. The Lord, you are of the church of the living God. Remember, you have been given the ministry of reconciliation. You are an ambassador for the Lord. Okay? You are an ambassador for the Lord. You have been given the ministry of reconciliation. And guess what? The word of reconciliation. Okay? Fear the Lord. Yes. But if you're being, again, if you're being chained by your own doing. You're so afraid to do anything. That's the problem. And if that is there, why shouldst thou destroy thyself? See? But also now, also now, you got to also to remember, brethren, Romans chapter 7 and Romans chapter 8. Okay? Again, I wish I could be sinless. We will be sinless. But not here while our spirit and soul is in the flesh. Okay? And remember what Paul said in Romans chapter 7. Go there. Romans chapter 7. Remember what Paul said. Verse 15 in Romans chapter 7. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Paul, of course, wanted to, of course. We as a church of the living God want to be totally sinless. But guess what, cousin? That ain't going to happen. Okay? And again, if you if you sit in there saying, well, I don't sin every day. So for one day, one 24-hour day, you were just like, you were, you were what? Just like Christ who never sinned? For one day? Get over yourself, buddy boy. Yeah, get over yourself. 
But see, Paul, in Romans chapter 7, verse 24 and 25, O oh, wretched man that I am. He wanted to be sinless. But Paul realized, guess what? I can't stop sinning. Oh. Really? Yeah, you're going to sin. Get over that. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Knowing that while his spirit and soul is in this, the flesh, you know, the skin suit, um, you're going to sin. Okay? And Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and verse 4. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, the Old Testament law, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That means simply, flesh is sinful. While you are on this earth, church of the living God, you're going to sin. Okay? Verse 4 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. See, we are to walk after the Spirit, to, to try to uh, remove our, uh, you know, not to sin, to depart from evil, which is understanding, which the fear of the Lord brings you, to depart from evil, that you sin not. But remember, thoughts can be sins. Something you put before your eye and you look at it, can be sin. Something you hear can be sin. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? But see, now, I, now wait a second now. Okay, now hold up. Look now at verse 17 in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ah, here, here, see, you're going to check this out. Be not, be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Being foolish is acting as if there is no God. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Ooh. Ooh, right? Be not over much wicked. Right away. Right away. Titus. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Not Philemon. Titus chapter 1. Verses 15 under verse 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Being abominable, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. They profess that they know God, but there is no changed life. They live as the world, but they believe. Right? Be not over much wicked. You're saved of the church of the living God, born again, converted, you know. You can sin and do something just like what the lost world can do. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 5 under verse 7. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 5 under verse 7. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. 
from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Really? Really? And what about Second Peter chapter 2? Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 19. Okay? Second Peter chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 19. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. Cursed children. See, there are those out there who call themselves Christians and say, just believe and are against the changed life that will come upon being of the church of the living God. They themselves are not saved. Why? Because there's no fear of God within them. Okay? But you as a church of the living God, you have to remember the Spirit of the Lord so don't do that, don't do that, do, don't do that. But he doesn't have a gun pointed at your head to prevent you from doing such things. You have to choose, see. Are you going to adhere to the scripture? Or are you going to be foolish? Foolish. Behaving as there is no God and go ahead and give yourself over to that sin. Perfect example for you. Pornography, huh? Pornography. You said a wicked thing before your eye. You know, you know, you know that's evil. You know that that's programming you. You know those images can be put in your, in your uh, mind, right? Lord, like, don't do that. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, don't do it. Don't do it. Right? But what happens? Some of you might actually just... just oh, you're going to be foolish and give yourself over to that wickedness. And then what happens, right? You're of the church of the living God. Ooh, boy. Oh, boy. How, how'd you sleep that night, brother? Huh? Could you... How many showers did you have to take? And you still felt dirty. See, God doesn't... You're not a robot. Okay? You're not a robot. You have to choose what pleases the Lord. He doesn't force you to do so. <clears throat> Verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass, the dumb ass, ass is a donkey, or donkey, whatever, Speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For while they speak great swelling words of vanity, just believe, just believe. Yeah, okay. You should have a changed life, but it's not, it, you don't have to. You can go ahead and live just like the world and don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. The freedom that our Lord gives to those of the church of the living God is not a free pass for you to go on living like the world. Oh, don't worry. We're going to get to Romans chapter 6. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Wait. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh. 
through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome, the same as he brought into bondage. Ooh, 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 okay? And, okay, looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 again, Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? There are people out there who uh, say, Well, I'm saved now. I can go ahead and do whatever, right? Romans chapter 6. I have a video, an expository video on Romans chapter 6, which I will be linking in, this, in the description box of this video, okay? Also, uh, an older video on sinless perfection, okay? Romans chapter 6, okay? Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then, verse 1, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Okay? Now, you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay? When the Lord uses you to bring someone onto himself through the scriptures, through the book of Romans, like I have said to you many times, if the Lord is using you by the, by the time you are talking with someone and you get... To Romans chapter 5, you know what's going to happen. You know what you're dealing with. You don't know what's going to happen. But you know with whom you are dealing with. Someone who is either broken or someone who is obstinate. Okay? You're going to know. You're going to know. It's, you're going to see. Okay? Romans chapter 6. Hence. Okay. I'm saying... what. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead, dead to sin live any longer therein? Hold the place there. 2 Corinthians. Yes, yes, we're going there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him changed life okay the Lord is going to change your life not at gunpoint but he is going to change your life okay you are his ambassador he lives within you okay we get that yes but there are, now notice this that's 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 okay go back to Romans chapter 6 now oh, oh wait 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 uh, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 17 Be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish The fool has said in, the, in his heart there is no God When you, church of the living God are giving yourself over to your wickedness you are being foolish You are acting as if there is no God Roll, roll that around in your head a little bit Uh huh Okay? Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Okay? Now when you go back to Romans chapter 6, verse 15, to the close of the chapter, don't look at me, look at the book. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Cheap grace. We're, God's grace covers everything, so it doesn't matter how I live. I can go on just like the world, 
fighting the changes of everything. Yeah, I can go live just like the world, right? Because God's grace covers everything. That's what these evil, uh, easy believism heretics teach you. Okay? Oh, oh you should have it. Yeah, yeah, but no, 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 yeah. 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 See. What then? Shall we sin because shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants, not slaves. Slaves don't have a choice, Mr. MacArthur. Servants do. God is right, you're wrong. One second, brethren. Sorry about that. Yes. God is right and you are wrong, John MacArthur and all you Calvinist types. Okay? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Remember what we read in Second Peter, right? Hold your place here. First Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you see how we do that? First Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter 5. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. I believe that this was not his mother. Because if it was his mother, don't you think the Lord would have said so? His father's wife. His father's wife. His stepmom. Ew. Okay. Doesn't make it any less grotesque that it wasn't his mother, but still. Okay. And notice that fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. Guess what, cousin? It is today, isn't it? And the Jesuit order, to who, who owns the pornography business, by the way, <laughs> who runs it, is promoting it. Yeah. Yeah. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. We're not going to judge you. Okay, yeah, we, I don't think that's not good, but I'm not going to judge you. Hey, that's between you and the Lord. You're doing something like that? Now, yeah, that's, yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to judge you. That's when you need to come into the church building, right? That's when you need us. <laughs> that's wicked. For I verily as absent as absent in body but present in spirit have oh, judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. Yes, people, we are to judge. How do we judge? According to the scripture. We are not to judge hypocritically. Hypocritically. For example, if I were a drunkard, I can't go up to you and say, don't be a drunkard. Okay? Hypocritical judgment. Because, see, there are some out there who have this idea that in order to judge other people, according to the scriptures, you yourself have to be sinless. Brother, haven't you already now by now figured out that that's not the case? And if you haven't, I understand. I understand. You will get it. You will get it. See, that's the thing. People will say, will take that argument and say, okay, the only way you can judge someone is if you're completely sinless. 
You can't be sinless down here, okay? When we're in heaven, we're going to be sinless, but you cannot be sinless down here on earth, okay? You can't, all right? Okay? You say, you're going to, you say you don't sin every day, then you're calling yourself, then you're saying you're just like the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Thinking a little highly of yourself, ain't you? Yeah. Yeah. Or even worse, I don't sin at all ever anymore since I've been saved. <laughs> yeah. Calling God a liar. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. But see, especially from the, you know, the Christians. Oh, well, you sin and you're judging me? Um, the judgment that is taught, spoken against is always about hypocritical judgment. You know, Matthew chapter 7, Romans chapter 2, you know, talking about being a hypocrite. Okay, again, if I were a drunkard telling you don't be a drunkard, whoop, that's the type of hypocritical judgment. Okay, the Lord saved me from sodomy. Okay? I can go to a sodomite and say, what you are doing is evil and disgusting in God's eyes. You need to repent of it. I was one. And he saved me from that. See? See how that works? See how that works? Okay? You might have been a drug addict of the Church of the Living God. Saved, born again, converted. Got you out of that. You can go to a drug addict. What you are doing is evil, wicked, and sinful. You need to repent of that. Okay? Hence, you're not being a hypocrite. Okay? But, okay, if you're saying, calling yourself a Christian, right, and you're getting schnuckered, drunk, and then the very next day, you, you, God hates what you're doing. What about what you did last night? Hmm? What about what you did last night? Yeah. See? Let's continue. Verse 4 in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Any sin that is out there, someone of the church of the living God can commit. I know a lot of you like to dispute that. But when you get right down to it, again, is God forcing a gun to their head? And you say, you can't prove that. You read First and Second Corinthians. There's your proof. Yes, brethren. Someone of the Church of the Living God can, can choose to go into sin. Their life is going to be a wreck. They ain't going to have no fruit. Their lives are going to be miserable. Hence, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 17 Be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before thy time? Let's continue. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the old man, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now look at what Paul says. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Yet, 
not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or with the extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. And see, we are in the world, but not of the world. See, they're, they're again hitting on the thing about being so terrified that the terror of the Lord, because of your own doing, keeps you here. When the Lord, we are in the world, we are His ambassadors, He saves you, and He wants to, He's going to use you. You are a minister of res reconciliation. You are an ambassador, okay? But like I said, I've, I've known brethren who get so scared that they become unfruitful. Okay? But that, and see right here, Verse 10, that's why we address Titus, Timothy, and Peter first. Okay? That is why. Verse 11, But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if a, any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or a, an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them? For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Now go back to Romans chapter 6. Picking up at verse 17. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. Remember, a servant has a choice, a slave doesn't. Why do you think? John MacArthur and his whole crowd are Calvinists. Okay? Elect and non elect. Okay? It's servant. A servant has choice, a slave does not. John MacArthur, Justin Peter, and all you guys, that free hole, whatever, all y'all, you're a bunch of devils. Tell them I said so. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, he became the servants of righteousness. Servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. The infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Being separate. Okay? For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Church of the living God, if you're in some kind of sin, whatever it may be, and you have given yourself over onto it, you have decided, you have made the choice, you are thinking foolishly that there is no God, right? And you're of the church of the living God, the Lord is within you? That shame, that guilt. Listening to Fear Factory. Okay? Listening to Fear Factory. Okay? When I, I've heard their stuff, as a saved man, I hear it, it gets in them, it's in my head. I can't get rid of it. Lord! <laughs> okay? When you give yourself over to that sin, brother, hmm? 
What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. If you're of the church of the living God, you are in sin. And whatever it is you're doing, and after you have given yourself over, and you have committed that sin, and you feel guilty, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May He cut you, break you, humiliate you, humble you, judge you. Praise the Lord. If you don't have any of that guilt. But playing. Professing that you know God. But denying the power thereof. You need to consider seriously. Whether or not you are truly saved. Because if your conscience. At all. Having the Lord within you isn't at all pricked. There's probably something not there. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 5 to deliver such a one on to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, the Lord might just kill you to keep you from sinning before him. But now being made free from sin and became and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. And the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see the contrast in Ecclesiastes chapter 7? See? We are to mortify our flesh. Keep it down. Okay? But see, the minute you start thinking that you're sinless, uh, amen, strive to not sin. Strive, absolutely. Hello, strive not to sin. But when you do, with some of it, it's so devastating. And amen, amen, amen. But see, that pride you can have. It can lead to pride. It can also tempt you to also sin. That's what that means, brother. Be not righteous over much. Get full of yourself. Get full of yourself. But then again in verse 17, <laughs> What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Verse 16, to not think more highly than himself than he ought to think. Verse 17, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Do you see? Let's, let's wrap this up. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. Yea, also from this withdraw not thine hand. For he that feareth God, and that's wisdom, shall come forth of them all. And the fear of the Lord is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. You're going to sin. Yes. Yes. God's grace is there. God's grace is there we confess our sins he is just to forgive us our sins okay the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin okay you got to remember that 
Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city, promising them liberty. They themselves are servants of, are servants of corruption. The fear of the Lord gives strength to those who fear the Lord. Someone who is wise has wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And that's uh, better than ten mighty men which are in the city. Flesh. See. And right here. Right here. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Also, take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. Remember how we kind of talked about hypocritical judgment? For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. It's humility, brethren. It is. It's all about humility. Being righteous over much leads on to pride. Pride is sin. And being uh, over much wicked, thinking because, well, God's grace is, covers everything. As if you have a license to do so. <laughs> that you know that and Romans 6 Romans 7 then Romans 8 what, what is there to say verse 24 and 25 in Romans chapter 7 O wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death because remember, flesh is sinful. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh law of sin. Paul was not this, he's not saying that he was sinning willfully. Okay? That he wasn't giving credence to sin. No, what he is saying is, you're going to sin. And we need to mortify our bodies, our flesh, to strive not to sin. But you are going to sin. You are going to sin. Know that. Don't give yourself over onto it. God forbid. But know that. Because, like I said, there are those out there who truly want to go sinless as hello as do i as does my wife as does every single one of you of the church of the living god you want to live sinless in your life it's not going to happen it's not it's, it's just not going to happen it will but not down here while we are in this flesh okay That's why, you know, brethren, examine yourselves. Prove yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Every single day, boy. Pick your pardon for this. Every single day I'm judging myself in the scriptures. What about you? Are you doing that? Do you judge yourself daily? Oh, you know, that gets tiresome, right? Good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Could it be that why some of you don't spend time in the scriptures judging yourselves? Uh, how shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Okay. Could it be that some of you don't spend ample time in the scriptures 
is because you're being foolish. Because you're being over much wicked, being foolish. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully, uh, brother, hopefully this answers your question. Um, I think it does. I hope it does. Praise the Lord. Um, again, uh, on to the brother who asked me this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You know, you know we love you. We know you love. You know we love you. And um, again, brethren, pray for one another. Mike, his goodness. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. My our brother Alexander would be correcting. <laughs> Go back to Second Corinthians. Go back to Second Corinthians chapter. Here it is, okay? Here it is. Verses 1 under verse 11 in 2 Corinthians, okay? Chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace. From God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, one and the same. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Now hold up. I understand that being so afraid to act as the Lord would have you to, I understand that, that you get so afraid. It's like, I'm so afraid to sin. I'm so afraid to sin, Lord. I'm so afraid to mess it up. I'm so afraid to sin. Good. Yay. Yay. But, 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 see, on that too, brother, 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 on that too, okay, you have to remember what our Lord said to Paul, verse 9 in uh, chapter 12 in Second Corinthians, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, for distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, I understand that because I've, I've been there. So afraid to do anything. So afraid to speak because you're afraid of messing it up. You're afraid of sinning. Praise the Lord. But you've got to remember, His grace is sufficient for thee. Okay? Be weak that he may be strong in you. Because remember, you're his ambassador, minister of reconciliation. Okay? Verse 5 in Second Corinthians chapter 1. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and, its, and salvation. We're ambassadors, remember? which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, and all who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Brook. You know that, right? Of course you do, church of the living God. Unless you're a Christian. Uh, brother, yeah, you, brother, you're right. But, you know, again, I told you, I ain't backing off on that. Especially right now, there needs to be a little distinction. Okay? Love you.
And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorance, ignorance is not knowing, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed down, that we were pressed out of measure, excuse me, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, hopeless, by our own strength. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raiseth the dead. See, if, if, if you're one of those who thinks you're saved by your belief, you're trusting in yourself. You're trusting in yourself. Who are you trusting in? <laughs> uh, you're trusting in the fact that you call. Uh, calling on the name of the Lord is a natural reaction from someone who has the fear of the Lord broken and contrite. It's just going to happen. And trying and calling upon the name of the Lord without brokenness, contrition, the fear of the Lord is vanity. Okay? That's why you can say that you've cried out to Jesus 27 times. Are you broken? Are you, have you been broken? Are you contrite? Do you have the fear of the Lord? I'm trusting Jesus. What he did on the cross. His blood cleanseth me from all sin. He, he's here. He's taking me to heaven when I die. Or, hopefully, the redemption of the purchase possession. Okay? I, don't, I trust on Jesus. Who are you trusting on? Boy? Huh? Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Right here. Ye also helping together by prayer for us. And incidentally, um, sister who left that, that, that comment, we're praying for you. You know the email that, that's on the channel? I don't know what your name is. The Lord knows who you are, and we prayed about, you know, KJV Believer. I don't know what your name is, okay? I would like to know the name of your husband, your name, okay? The Lord knows who we were praying for, but that would be helpful. Don't, don't do it publicly, okay? Please, don't do it publicly. There are enough devils that watch this stuff. Uh, do, privately, okay? Go, go, go right ahead, okay? But, okay? Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Pray for one another, brethren. Take the time to pray for one another. His goodness, brethren. Um, sometimes prayer is, all, prayer is all we got. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. If you don't know their name, well, there's several we pray for who we don't know their names. Sister, okay? Um, there are, you know, God knows who you're praying for. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, that one brother from so-and-so, uh, from so-and-so, we don't know who he is, you do, Lord, can you, you know? Pray for one another. Pray for one another. Okay? Praying for someone else over yourself is humility. And that's what our Lord wants from you. To love mercy. To walk humbly before Him. Not to get stuck up on yourself. And not to use His grace as a get out of jail free card as if you can just go on and sin see. let's 
pray. Bow your head. Bow your head. I don't care how many times you watch this. Bow your head. Lord, uh, thank you for this day that you have given us today. Thank you for each of the church of the living God. Thank you, Lord, for dying for us and shedding your blood to cleanse us from our sins. Because we, Lord, we put you there. And we deserve your wrath. But thank you for your grace and your mercy that you have saved us because we came to you on your terms. Lord, these times are just getting worse, Lord. And there's so many of the Church of the Living God, we included, who need to be strengthened, encouraged, and quickened. May we cleave to you, Lord. May we cleave to your word. May you lead us and guide us. And Lord, may we be having courage in you. May we be weak that you may be strong in us. That we may go forth as you would have us to go. To speak your word in truth. In love. In fearlessness of the world. But ever fearing you. Lord, if... Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, if someone out there may get something, anything, just one person, Lord, spirit, soul, and body, receive anything from this, your will be done. And may you be glorified today, Lord. Strengthen the brethren, quicken the brethren. Please, uh, Lord, every brother, every sister who has ever given, may they have a fruit abounding unto their account a hundredfold. And for all who have prayed and do pray, may your will be done. And Lord, may you bring forth the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, anytime you want to redeem us, <laughs> we thank you, we praise you, and we give you thanks. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God's people said, Amen. That's going to be it for this video. Like I said, it got, a um, uh, brother gave uh, a nugget, which is in the works. There are other videos coming. Um, thank you very much, brother, sisters. Thank you, every single one of you. We love you. Praying for so many of you. And we will see you in the next video.